In this video, we take your feedback from installing Google Play on Amazon Fire tablets to troubleshoot your installations. Hello everyone and welcome to Tech Fix Flicks. Our tutorial installing the Google Play Store onto Amazon Fire HD tablets has proven very popular and this simple modification greatly expands the functionality of the Fire device, introducing a selection of apps from the Google Play Store which would otherwise be unavailable. If you've yet to watch our original tutorial, you should do so before continuing as you'll find the full method described in that video which also provides the context for this one. We won't be recapping that content in this video which instead looks to your feedback to troubleshoot your installations. For the avoidance of doubt, we stand by the content of the original tutorial and following the steps shown will successfully install Google Play Store on your Fire tablet. Nevertheless, no matter how well we believe we've communicated our method and how well you believe you've understood it, there remains the possibility that it simply doesn't work for you for a myriad of reasons from hardware variation to system settings or simple miscommunication. We begin by recapping the fundamentals of the installation process. The first step should always be to ensure that your device is configured to allow the installation of apps from unknown sources. In absolutely every other circumstance, we would strongly advise against doing this, and we would certainly reset this value back to the default having followed our tutorial, to ensure that no further apps from unknown sources are installed. This brings us to possibly the most frequently asked question about this tutorial. Can I trust the four files downloaded? If your question is simply does the method work, the answer is straightforwardly yes. If you follow the tutorial closely and ensure that you download the four files linked and then install them in the order shown, you will successfully install Google Play Store on your device. But your question typically runs deeper than that, asking whether we can truly trust resources obtained from beyond the curated environment of the Amazon App Store. As you'll be well aware, we are neither the creators nor the publisher of these files, and we have no way of knowing on a line-by-line -line basis what their code contains. Yet this is absolutely true of any other app we could download. How many apps are we all carrying which leak our personal information, or advertise to us in a way which we would prefer they didn't? There's no reason to suspect that these files are any more or any less harmful than any other. For us, it's a simple matter of risk versus reward. We would suggest that the risk is low and the reward is high, although ultimately the decision is yours alone. We can confirm that we performed this modification on both of our tablets in November and December of 2018 and have used them without incident since then. Without this modification, your Fire device will remain restricted to those apps available from the Amazon App Store, unless Amazon and Google reverse their current business strategies and look to cooperate in future. Without the full range of apps from the Google Play Store, the Amazon Fire devices are operating below their full capabilities. With the Play Store added, the value of the Fire device is greatly enhanced as there are few fully functional and capable Android tablets in this price bracket. We are frequently asked whether this will damage the tablet or invalidate the warranty. This won't damage the machine and there's absolutely no reason to believe that it would. Remember that all we are doing here is installing four APK modules onto a device with which they are inherently compatible. It's fundamentally no different to installing four apps from the Amazon App Store and carries the same level of risk. We should remember that this is more akin to installing an app than it is to routing the device. We are making no changes to the firmware and are simply installing software to the device. Whilst no installation is risk free, again, this is no more dangerous than any other app. Warranty invalidation is a legal matter falling under the purview of Amazon's legal team. Obviously, we are entirely unable to make representations as to the administration of any warranty scheme. We would point out, however, that Fire OS makes specific provision for the installation from external sources, and that Amazon clearly anticipate and enable such installations when they are by no means obligated to do so. It would be unusual for them to then suggest that a warranty could be invalidated by a practice which they both enable and facilitate. Furthermore, the process shown in our tutorial is easily reversible by a simple reset and makes no permanent changes to the device firmware or hardware. Again, it seems difficult to make a case for warranty and validation when the modification can be so readily reversed, although again, the ultimate decision belongs to Amazon. We've been asked whether Amazon might take away this ability in a future update. Of course, as Fire OS belongs to Amazon, they can do as they wish. Nevertheless, there's a compelling argument to suggest that they won't. Firstly, it would be unwise to take away a feature which is very popular. People always react badly to such a withdrawal, and it would represent a public relations disaster for Amazon. Secondly, whilst Amazon would never acknowledge it, 
This modification also drives sales of Fire tablets for customers looking for a reasonably well-specified tablet at an accessible price point, offering full Google Play Store compatibility. Take away that functionality and the Fire tablet series become much less desirable. We certainly wouldn't purchase without access to the full library of Android apps being available to us. Thirdly, we'd be interested to see whether such a manoeuvre would be viewed as anti-competitive, particularly by the European Union, who've championed exactly these types of cases in recent years. We've been asked whether a variety of specific apps obtained via the Play Store will work on the modified Fire device. Whilst there are obviously far too many apps to test, we can confirm success with the overwhelming majority of apps. We've installed some 80 apps from the Google Play Store, and there's very little difference between our modified Fire HD and a native Android tablet. A commonly raised concern is one of the version numbers for the APK files installed, particularly as the availability of updated versions is prominently displayed at the time of download. Whilst newer versions may work, it remains more straightforward to install the older version and allow the Fire HD to perform an update to the newest compatible version. What should we do if our installation is unsuccessful? We would suggest deleting all four of the installed APKs before restarting the tablet, then reinstalling the APKs strictly in the order detailed. To delete an APK, drag down from the top of the screen, then tap the settings cog. From the settings menu, head to apps and notifications, and thereafter manage all applications. Then tap on each of the four modules previously installed, namely Google Account Manager, Google Services Framework, Google Play Services, and Google Play Store. For each of the installed apps, click Uninstall. Having uninstalled, restart the device and reinstall using the order shown in the original tutorial. Two common errors result from problems at the point of downloading. Where we see an error suggesting that there was a problem passing the package, this typically highlights a problem arising from trying to install 64-bit APK files on a 32-bit device. In essence, the 32-bit tablet is unable to determine how to handle a file designed for a 64-bit device. You should ensure at the point of downloading that your APK file is suitable for the specifications of your Fire device. When we are advised that the package appears to be corrupt, this typically signifies that the original APK download was either incomplete or corrupted. You should therefore delete the file downloaded and return to the web to download an entirely fresh copy, then use the new copy to re-attempt installation. Finally, at least one comment referred to Google Play Store purchases not showing up after login. In that instance, we would advocate patience, as it can sometimes take time for the account to properly synchronise, and this can happen on any device, not just a modified fire. Typically, purchases not shown immediately will be available within 24 hours. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you found it useful, please consider subscribing by clicking the logo on screen now. If you'd like to see more, there are two suggestions currently on screen. If you have a better, faster or more economical solution, let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. You're also welcome to follow us on Twitter. Until your next tech fix, goodbye.